Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, welcome to my garden. What we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna be harvesting this entire row from way back there all the way to up here are potatoes that I planted back in March. We're gonna harvest them and weigh them and see if I beat how many pounds of potatoes I grew last year. Last year I grew 130 pounds of potatoes. I planted one and a half of my raised beds. They're 16 by four feet. And so I did one entire raised bed and then half a raised bed, one potato per square foot. Even though this is a completely different style of gardening, I figured it'd be fun to see if I beat out what I did last year. We're gonna harvest all these and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cure them. What curing does is it prepares the potato for long-term storage in a pantry or root cellar. I don't have a root cellar, so pantry. And so I'll show you how to do that. This this is a no-till roost out style garden and I actually started this no-till garden back in July of 2020. What I did is I put cardboard down and then I put a ton of composted horse manure. I put it a ton of grass clippings and some compost and roost out typically you grow your potatoes in straw. Well straw I have to buy but I have a ton of leaves and grass clippings that are free so that is what I tried doing here. Last fall I went to my neighbors around me and I asked if I could have their leaves and I raked up their leaves and I got their leaves for free and I covered all my raised beds with leaves in the fall and as I was removing the leaves from the raised beds to plant stuff in the garden I took those leaves and I put them on this bed and then before I planted the potato what I did is I pushed back until I got to that compost I planted the potato put the leaves on top and let it go and then as they grew I put horse manure and grass clippings horse manure and grass clippings. And that is how this bed has been going since I planted these potatoes back in March. I have four different varieties that I know in here for sure. I have two different varieties of fingerlings. I have a red one and a banana one, I think. I have butterball, I have Yukon gold. Sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dogs barking. And then in the very back, I have a couple different random varieties that my sister had given me from her CSA that she was a part of that sprouted and I threw those in the ground too. So this entire bed here was completely free. The only thing I had to pay for was the seed potatoes and some of the seed potatoes I got for free for my sister too. So I'm pretty excited about that. So let's just get into it and see what we have. I'm really curious to know what I have going underneath this ground here and to see if this worked for me because if it did, this is fantastic. So we're gonna start on this end and we're gonna work our way back to the back of the garden. I believe these first few varieties I have here are fingerling potatoes. I could go watch the video when I planted these, but that's okay, we're gonna be surprised together. I brought out a pitchfork to harvest these, but this is supposed to be Oh, an easy no-till method. So I thought I'll wait. Oh, nope, these are not fingerlings. These are probably either butterball or Yukon golds. Oh my goodness, this is easy. It hasn't rained here since March and I didn't water these at all. Well, this is certainly really easy to dig up. There is no resistance. It's not messy. I'm gonna put these green top, these green potato tops right back on it and I'm gonna let those just compost in place. You know the potatoes are ready to harvest when they flower and then they start to die back. So right down here is where my native soil is and it's still pretty packed, but all this goodness is just stuff that I've added Here's some good sized ones. I wanna show you just how easy it is to dig these up. You just have to take your hand basically and move it. It just moves so easily, there's no digging. And they just show themselves. This is so much easier than the way I did it last year. Look how beautiful these are. Oh, well, that's garbage. They just fall out of the ground. That is just incredible. Oh, we might be getting into the fingerlings now. Yep, we might be getting into the fingerlings now. I wanna finish the Yukon Golds first or the Butterball. It's just too easy. It's just too easy. That's. So, yep, we're getting into the Yukon, or the fingerlings now. Well, these are small. So we are done harvesting the first ones. I have a pile here, 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 and here. And all I'm doing is pushing back the soil and the plants, and then I'm gonna let these compost in place. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're gonna get into harvesting the fingerlings. I do remember now that I put either the butterball or the Yukon Golds first and then fingerlings and then the other one so that I had a good separation so I knew which ones were which. So I think that this may have been a fail when it comes to my fingerling potatoes. Look at the size of these. I'm pretty sure these plants are ready to harvest because the plants are completely dead and it's time to harvest. I'm thinking it's probably because I didn't water them because the absolute biggest fingerling potato I have is this one. And they should all be about this size versus this size, or most of them are this size. So, so what I'm thinking maybe for next year, cause I was definitely looking the most forward to those fingerling potatoes is try growing the fingerling potatoes in the raised beds because the russet potatoes and those butterball or Yukon gold ones are looking pretty decent. See, look how small these little guys are. I almost like, I'm like, are they even worth harvesting? Cause they're so freaking small. <sighs> okay, so I just dug up a rabbit's nest and oh, oh, there are four little bunnies in here. Oh my gosh, and it was squeaking and I don't, I have gloves on, so I didn't put my scent on it, I don't think. And this is right in my garden. Sorry about the dog. And I just tried to put it back and I'm just gonna let it go. Um, I have plenty in here that I, I'm not gonna kill those babies. The poor mom is probably somewhere around here freaking out because I've just been in here. I'm gonna dig the potatoes up around it. I'm gonna try to put as bunch of this mulch back as possible. My adrenaline is going. So. Oh, really? I'm actually oof, getting a little bit emotional about this because I know that my garden, I'm growing it for food for us, but I am also creating an ecosystem and I have enough food to share. So if there's a bunny in my garden, I'm not going to kill these rabbit, these little bunnies. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see in there, but. I don't want to disturb them, but there are four little bunnies in here, and here's her fur that I disrupted, and there's one moving right there. You see that? It's right there. Oh, it's moving. Oh my gosh, so I'm just gonna kind of put this back the way it was as much as possible, and hopefully the mama doesn't um, abandon these because I touched them. So what I'm gonna do is try to cover this back up. Um, and just let this be. So I know there will probably be a few of you out there that think I'm absolutely crazy for letting bunnies live in my garden, but I couldn't live with myself if I knew that I did anything for these bunnies to die. I have created an environment where a mama bunny wanted to make a nest in my garden and I'm gonna let that be. Even if it's an unpopular opinion, I, and if I eventually have to put a fence around my garden to keep them out, then that's what I'm gonna do. But I just couldn't live with myself if I did anything to purposely end the lives of these four bunnies. So yeah, we're just gonna move on. To hear those little bunnies squeak was about as much as my heart could take. <laughs> that was, Oh my gosh, my adrenaline is like pumping like crazy. Oh, this is exciting. These are definitely the biggest fingerlings we've gotten so far. Yes, I'm putting them in my shirt. So again, bunnies are here over. We're gonna leave them alone. Now this is exciting. Oh, you know why? These are bigger. This potato bed is actually at a slope from where that raised bed is, and there's water that comes out of that raised bed. And I bet that water is draining down into this part, and that's why I'm getting actual fingerling potato sized potatoes and not these itty bitty tiny potatoes. That's exciting! So I know water, water, water. Which I can do that for next year. I can note that in. We are officially done harvesting the fingerlings and now we're on to the other 
Butterball or Yukon Gold. And let's see what we have in here. So far, I can tell that these are already gonna be bigger and I think they're gonna produce better for me. Oh, look at that one. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> oh, these are awesome. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Look at these beauties. It's getting dark out here. So this is the seed potato. It's all rotten and gross. Don't judge this system. I know I need one of those rue aprons. I just haven't bought one and I need to get this done before the sun sets. Look at these beauties. We got this row done. Now we're gonna start on this row. Oh my gosh, can you see that already? Oh yes, oh my goodness. We're getting into the red ones. These are the ones for my sister's CSA. Ah! I just found an ant's nest, so gross. Luckily here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't have fire ants like you guys do down south. I think I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna pick up all these potatoes. It's getting dark. Changed my mind. I decided to go ahead and just harvest the rest of those potatoes. What I did is I took a pitchfork. I didn't film it because it was too dark. And I used that and flipped it over so that the ants would kind of disperse and I could just individually pick up the potatoes. So I think we got 90% of the potatoes. At the very end of that row, there were some volunteer potatoes that I didn't harvest and I'm just gonna let them be. But now we're gonna go ahead and weigh the potatoes and then we're gonna go ahead and get them curing. So it's com it is dark out here now, but I'm under my covered porch, which has some light. So I just have my bathroom scale here and we're just gonna use that. I know this basket weighs a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that. It'll be close enough. 18.6. These are the first potatoes that I harvested. All right, we got the next basket. These were the last round potatoes that did really well, I think. 12 pounds. Nineteen point eight. You may have noticed these potatoes back here. That, these two are rotten. These were potatoes I actually harvested last Sunday. These were volunteer potatoes that were in the bed that I had planted potatoes in last year. And they've already been out here curing for a week. I never weighed them. So we're gonna get these weighed up so I know how many volunteer potatoes I got versus how many potatoes I grew, versus how many potatoes I purchased to then grow. 18.6. So the verdict is in. I grew a total of 68 pounds and eight ounces. That includes 18.6 pounds of volunteer potatoes that I didn't actually purchase. They were potatoes that were in the ground from last year and grew to produce all these potatoes in this basket right here. So this was a zero investment because those potatoes were free. And I purchased, I think like 20 pounds of potatoes. The Butterball and the Yukon Gold potatoes were like $1.99 for the seed potatoes, but those fingerling seed potatoes were like $4.99 a pound. So I don't think I got my money's worth when it comes to those fingerling potatoes. Because the amount of potatoes I actually grew from the seed potatoes was 50.2 pounds. So that means I got about 30.2 pounds from the 20 pounds that I planted. So I would definitely not consider this a win this year. Last year, I grew 130 pounds of potatoes, so more than double what I grew this year, and I spent a whole lot less money. I actually purchased from Home Depot in little boxes, and there was just three potatoes in each one, and they weren't, it didn't seem like the best quality potato, but they seemed to produce better, and I think it has to do with the fact that they were in the raised bed, they were in better soil, and they were watered regularly, because my raised beds are on an irrigation system, and it rained a lot last year. Last year was an extremely wet spring. This year, it's barely rained. 
We haven't had any rain since March and it's July 24th. And so these potatoes got very little watering. I maybe watered them three or four times in the entire time they were in the ground. So yeah, I think it has to do with the fact that I didn't water them very much is the reason they didn't grow very big. So I need to rethink how I'm gonna plant my potatoes for next year. 50 pounds of potatoes is probably a more realistic amount of potatoes for my husband and I to go through in a year. We don't eat a lot of potatoes. Potatoes are not our favorite like starch in our diet. We'd rather eat quite a few other things instead of potatoes but I don't wanna waste that space because it seems like a lot of wasted space because that was a lot of space that I had these potatoes in and it wasn't good bang for my buck because I definitely put a lot more money. My husband's staring at me watching and I've been trying to be just, I've been trying to ignore it, but he's getting water and staring at me. So if you have any suggestions for me on what I did right or wrong when it comes to growing these potatoes, please leave it down in the comment box below because this is only my second year gardening and I feel like this was not a success, but I don't know. And let me know if you think it's the water that was the issue or more the fact that I did raise a bed last year versus roost out. I mean, there are quite a few factors there when it comes to what affected my yield so much, but I'm thinking that it has to do more with the water than necessarily the soil type. But will you guys please help me out with that if you can? How I'm gonna cure these potatoes, I just have some cardboard. I put the potatoes one layer thin. I'm gonna let them sit out here for two weeks. You want the temperature between 80 and 85 from what I understand to cure your potatoes. You want them out of direct sunlight. That's why they're under my covered porch here. And last year this worked great for me curing them here. What curing is, is you're basically just drying out that outer skin so that it can be a little bit more shelf stable and it'll last longer in your pantry. I don't have a root cellar, I just have a pantry. So we're gonna try to have to eat through these quicker. I am excited to eat those fingerling potatoes. I think they're going to be delicious. I think they're going to be way better than the potatoes I grew last year. I didn't realize I grew low glycemic, kind of more of like of a starchy potato than like a creamy potato. And so, and so I'm really excited to have those fingerling potatoes. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of what I have going on around here, there are some videos that will pop up here. If you're new, go ahead and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. If you know anyone that would enjoy watching this video, I'd greatly appreciate you sharing it with them. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope your gardens are very abundant, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.